Hello and welcome to the session on Anaxagoras. Anaxagoras 500 to 428 BC was an early pre-Socratic Greek philosopher from Ionia. Although he was one of the first philosophers to move to Athens as a base, he is sometimes considered to be part of the poorly defined school of pluralism and some of his ideas also influenced the later development of atomism. Many of his ideas in the physical sciences were quite revolutionary in their day and quite insightful in retrospect. Anaxagoras was born to an aristocratic and landed family in the city of Klazomene in the Greek colony of Ionia on the west coast of present-day Turkey. As a young man, he became the first of the major pre-Socratic philosophers to move to Athens, which was then rapidly becoming the center of Greek culture, where he remained for about 30 years. During his time, he became a favorite and a teacher of the prominent and influential statesman, orator and general Pericles, 495 to 429 BC one of the architects of Athens' primacy during the Golden Age, although it seems that Anaxagoras and the young Socrates never actually met. One of Socrates' teachers, Aeschylus, studied under Anaxagoras for some time. His work was also known to the major writers of the day, including Sophocles, Euripides, Aeschylus and Aristophanes. In about 450 BC, however, Anaxagoras was arrested by Pericles' political opponents on a charge of contravening the established religion by his teachings on origins of the universe. The first philosopher before Socrates to be brought to trial for impiety. With Pericles' influence, he was released, but he was forced to retire from Athens to exile in Lampascus in Ionia, where he died around the year 428 BC. Metaphysical Principles Anaxagoras was influenced by two strains in early Greek thought. First, there is the tradition of inquiry into nature founded by the Milesians and carried on by Heraclitus. The early Milesian scientist philosophers, Thales, Anaximander, Anaximenes, sought to explain the cosmos and all its phenomena by appealing to regularities within the cosmic system itself, without reference to extra-natural causes or to the personified gods associated with aspects of nature by traditional Greek religion. They based their explanations on the observed regular behavior of the materials that make up the cosmos. Second, there is the influence of elitic arguments due to Parmenides concerning the metaphysical requirements for a basic explanatory entity within this Milesian framework and the metaphysically proper way to go about inquiry. Parmenides can be seen as arguing that any acceptable cosmological account must be rational, that is, in conformity with the canons for proper inquiry and must begin with metaphysically acceptable entities that are wholly and completely what they are, are not subject to generation, destruction or alteration and are wholly knowable. Anaxagoras bases his account of the natural world on three principles of metaphysics, all of which can be seen as grounded in these elitic requirements. No becoming or passing away. Everything is in everything and no smallest or largest. No becoming or passing away. A fundamental tenet of elitic theory is that what is not cannot be. Parmenides, using this claim, argued that coming to be and passing away are therefore ruled out. Because genuine coming to be is changed from what is not to what is, while destruction is changed from what is to what is not. Thus, says Parmenides, what is, is without start or stop, since coming to be and passing away have wandered very far away and true trust drove them out. 
Anaxagoras accepts this principle, explaining apparent generation and destruction through and replacing them by mixture and separation of ingredients. What seems to us through perception to be generation of new or destruction of old entities is not that at all. Rather, objects that appear to us to be born, to grow and to die are merely arrangements of more metaphysically basic ingredients. The mechanism for the apparent coming to be is mixture. Through that mechanism, the real things, the ingredients can retain their character throughout. When an arrangement breaks apart, the ingredients are dissociated from one another and can be remixed to form different arrangements, that is, other perceptible objects. One way to think of Anaxagoras' point is that animals, plants, human beings, the heavenly bodies and so on are natural constructs. They are constructs because they depend for their existence and character on the ingredients of which they are constructed. Yet they are natural because their construction occurs as one of the processes of nature. Unlike human-made artifacts, they are not teleologically determined to fulfill some purpose. This gives Anaxagoras a two-level metaphysics. Things such as earth, water, fire, hot, bitter, dark, bone, flesh, stone or wood are metaphysically basic and genuinely real. The objects constituted by these ingredients are not genuinely real, they are temporarily mixtures with no autonomous metaphysical status. Everything in everything. Anaxagoras' commitment to elatic principles rules out the possibility of coming to be or passing away. It also rules out real qualitative changes and transformations. When a warm liquid cools, it seems, the hot liquid becomes cold. When a child ingests milk, the milk and bread are, it seems, transformed into flesh, blood and bone. Yet Anaxagoras objects to these claims because they entail that the hot ceases to be and the cold comes to be in the liquid and that the bread and milk are destroyed while flesh, blood and bone come to be. His solution is to claim not only that all things were together in the original mixture, but that everything is in everything at all times. If there is already blood and bone in the milk and bread, then the growth of the child can be attributed to the accumulation of these ingredients from the bread and milk and their assimilation into the substance of the child's body rather than to the transformation of bread and milk into something else. Although interpreters both ancient and modern have seen the problem of explaining nutrition and growth as the primary motivation for the everything in everything principle, it is more likely that Anaxagoras' adoption of the general metaphysical principle of no becoming leads him to claim that everything is in everything. Nutrition and growth as they are normally understood are simply particularly clear instances of the change that are ruled out if there is no becoming. The everything in everything principle asserts the omnipresence of ingredients. In everything, there is a mixture of all the ingredients, that is, every ingredient is everywhere at all times. This principle is a fundamental tenet of Anaxagoras' theory and leads to difficulties of interpretation. If everything is in everything, there must be interpenetration of ingredients, for it must be possible for there to be many ingredients in the same space. Indeed, the principle requires that all ingredients be in every space at all times. This will allow any ingredient to emerge from a mixture through accumulation at any point at any time and thus allow for the appearance of coming to be of things or qualities. No smallest or largest. Anaxagoras claims that there is no smallest and no largest. If there is no lower limit on the density of an ingredient, then no ingredient will be completely removed from 
any region of the mixture through the force of the rotary motion caused by nows. Since the share of the large and the small are equal in number, in this way too, all things will be in everything. Nor is it possible that be separate, but all things have a share of everything. Since it is not possible that there is a least, it would not be possible that be separated, nor come to be by itself. But just as in the beginning, now too all things are together. It makes clear that the no smallest principle is connected to the principle of everything in everything and asserts that the no smallest claim depends on the impossibility of what is not. Here is one way to interpret what Anaxagoras is saying. If there were a smallest particle, density, amount of any ingredient, call it S, we could in principle through separation reduce the amount of S in some area of the mixture to that smallest and then induce further separation through rotation which would remove that ingredient from a particular area of the mixture. That would leave some area without everything in everything. The area would cease to be S to any degree and so would be not S. In that area, the explanation of coming to be in terms of emergence from a previous mixture would fail. Anaxagoras' solution is to deny that there is any lower limit on smallness. Adopting the model of density, he can say that there is no lowest degree of density in the mixture. This emphasis on density makes it clear that Anaxagoras' technical sense of smallness is not one of particle size but of degree of submergence or emergence in the mixture. For an ingredient to be small is for there to be a comparatively low density of that ingredient in a particular area of the mixture in comparison with all the other ingredients in that area. The corresponding assertion that there is no upper limit on largeness can then be interpreted as the claim that no matter how emergent from the mixture an ingredient is, it can become still more emergent. So no matter how sweet some water tastes, there is still some salt in it. The salt in the sample is small, that is submerged in the mixture of water and other ingredients, but there will never cease to be salt in the sample. Correspondingly, no matter how salty another sample is, it can always become more salty and even turn to salt because there is no upper limit to the degree of emergence from the background. As the salt emerges, other ingredients will submerge but will never disappear so that the wet itself is deeply submerged in the mix and we are left with an apparently solid block of salt. The physical principles. The elitic metaphysics that Anaxagoras accepts shapes the science that he proposes. Anaxagoras offers an ambitious scientific theory that attempts to explain the workings of the cosmos even while accepting the elitic ban on coming to be and passing away. His goal is scientific knowledge, that is, understanding as far as that is possible for human beings. Mixture and rotation. The original state of the cosmos was an unlimited epirion mixture of all the ingredients. The mixture of ingredients, all with all, exists eternally. Up to some point in the past, it was motionless and it was everywhere undifferentiated or almost so. This undifferentiated mass includes all there is of all the natural ingredients that there are. The ingredients that will eventually form the natural constructs that constitute the cosmos as we know it. Nothing is ever added to or subtracted from this storehouse of stuffs. Although the mass of stuffs is not always homogeneous, 
In fact, there are different densities of ingredients even at this earliest stage. Air, dark, moist stuff and aether, bright, fiery stuff are the most emergent, largest ingredients. And their dominance means that the original mixture must have been like a dense, bright cloud. Nothing else would be evident or manifest. Even had there been an observer, at some point, nows, the time being right, set the mixture in motion and caused it to begin to revolve. The rotary motion causes the ingredients in the mass to shift. This shifting produces what Anaxagoras calls separating off. Because the mass is a plenum, any separation will be a rearrangement of ingredients. The continued spreading rotation produces more and more separation. The everything and everything principle continues to hold. So there are all ingredients at all places at all times. But the different densities of ingredients allow for local variations. And so the rotating mass becomes qualitatively differentiated. Ingredients and seeds. Nowhere in the extant fragments does Anaxagoras give a complete list of the ingredients in the mixture or a clear indication of their scope. So it is up to commentators to figure out what he meant, given the available evidence. There are three alternatives. First, some scholars have held that Anaxagoras limited the basic ingredients to the opposites, such as hot and cold, wet and dry, sweet and bitter, dark and light, and so on. It is the opposites that have explanatory force in the theory, and all other things and properties are reducible to the opposites. On this view, all the material stuffs and all the objects in the universe would be natural constructs. At the opposite extreme, a second option accepts that literally everything in the natural world is in the original mixture, opposites, but also natural materials, animals and plants and so on. This view makes no distinction between ingredients and what have been called natural constructs. There is a middle view which rejects the opposites only account and accept that some things are natural constructs. The original mix includes opposites but also natural substances like metals and earth and the ingredients of animals such as flesh, blood and bone but no whole physical objects such as plants and animals themselves or their organic parts such as legs and hearts. The word for seeds, spermata, occurs twice in the fragments in lists of ingredients but Anaxagoras nowhere explains or makes it clear what it means. There are a number of options. Seeds have been taken to be the smallest possible bits of ingredients or to be extremely small ingredients that some interpretations take to be origins for an exagoras of living things which then expand by the addition of other ingredients. A seed would then be a biological origin point and might perhaps be the root through which nows, which controls all things that have soul, that is anything alive, enters a living thing. If a seed is mixed with the right ingredients in the right circumstances, a living thing will grow. Mind or intellect? Anaxagoras viewed that the cosmos is controlled by nows, mind or intelligence. Anaxagoras is adamant that nows is completely different from the ingredients that constituted the original mixture. Mind is present to some things, but it is not an ingredient as flesh and blood are ingredients in a dog. Anaxagoras claims that if nows were just another ingredient, it could neither know nor rule in the way it does. Mind or intellect plays a number of roles in Anaxagoras' system. First, 
it inaugurates the rotation of the mass of ingredients. It then controls that rotation and the local rotations that take place within the large whirl that is the whole cosmos. Now then is not only first cause, it also one might say is the preserver of order in the cosmos as it maintains the rotation that govern all the natural processes. And Exagoras does not explain how these processes work or how nows can affect the ingredients. The principle of predominance. After reasserting that no ingredient is ever fully dissociated or separated from any other, Anaxagoras adds that all nows is alike. A problem for the principle of predominance is to determine what it is to be a predominant ingredient, especially given the everything in everything and no smallest principles. A classic example is the following. A gold in this gold ring is that discontinuous part of the total mixture in which gold predominates. Science and knowledge. Anaxagoras developed his metaphysical theories from his cosmological theory. He denied that there is any limit to the smallness or largeness of the particles of the original cosmic ingredients so that infinitesimally small fragments of all other ingredients can still be present within an object which appears to consist entirely of just one material. Anaxagoras was the first to give the correct explanation of eclipses and was both famous and notorious for his scientific theories, including his claims that the sun is a mass of red hot metal, that the moon is earthy, and that the stars are fiery stones. Anaxagoras gave a complete account of the universe, of the heavens, the earth, and geological and meteorological phenomena. The accounts of the action of nows and the original rotation and its consequences appear in the fragments. Anaxagoras claims that the cosmic rotary motion could produce other worlds like our own. The rotation of the mixture begins in a small area and then spreads out through the mass. As the extent of the mixture is unlimited, the rotation and expansion will continue forever, bringing more and more ingredients into the whirl. The force and speed of the rotation is much faster at the edges, where the expanding rotation meets the as yet unmoved mass of ingredients. What we perceive of the rotation is much slower than the unobserved rotation. The force is enough to pull apart and rearrange the ingredients. Both ancient and modern critics have criticized Anaxagoras for being unclear about the nature of nows, mind or intelligence, and its role in his theory. Anaxagoras claims that nows has all discernment and that nows knew them all. The things that are being mixed together, the things that are being separated off, and the things that are being dissociated. Further, Anaxagoras remarks that there is nows in many things and that it is alike in all the things that it is in, both large and small. Aristotle says that Anaxagoras conflates soul and mind and seems to confirm this insofar as Anaxagoras they treats nows primarily as a mover, yet also says that it controls all things that have soul. It seems likely that in things other than cosmic nows, those compacted or mixed together natural constructs that have soul. The powers of nows include both knowing and perceiving. Nowhere do we have an analysis of the process of thinking for Anaxagoras, and although Aristotle and Theophrastus say that earlier thinkers identified thinking and sense perception, there is little evidence for this view in Anaxagoras. Now, let us summarize what we have discussed so far. 
Anaxagoras is best known for his cosmological theory of the origins and structure of the universe. He maintained that the original state of the cosmos was a thorough mixture of all its ingredients, although this mixture was not entirely uniform and some ingredients are present in higher concentrations than others and varied from place to place. At some point in time, this primordial mixture was set in motion by the action of nows, mind, and the whirling motion shifted and separated out the ingredients, ultimately producing the cosmos of separate material objects that we perceive today. For Anaxagoras, this was a purely mechanistic and naturalistic process with no need for gods or any theological repercussions. However, he did not elucidate on the precise nature of mind, which he appears to consider material, but distinguished from the rest of matter in that it is finer, purer and able to act freely. It is also present in some way in everything, a kind of dualism. Now, you can try to answer the questions given here. Write a short note on the influences of philosophy of Anaxagoras. Discuss the practical contribution Anaxagoras' philosophy. Explain the cosmic features of Anaxagoras' philosophy. Examine the contributions of Anaxagoras to ancient Greek philosophy. Analyze Anaxagoras' doctrine of nows, mind. Critically evaluate the Anaxagoras' idea of ingredients and seeds. Explain the concept everything in everything. Hope that you may go through the reference books given here. Anaxagoras, written by P. Kurt in 2007, published by University of Toronto Press, Toronto. The texts of the early Greek philosophers, the complete fragments and selected testimonies of the major pre-Socratics, written by D. W. Graham in 2010, published by Cambridge University Press, Cambridge. The Fragments of Anaxagoras, written by D. Saida in 2005, published by Academia Verlag, Sankat Augustin. The Pre-Socratic Philosophers, written by J. Barnes in 1982, published by Routledge, London. The Derverni Papyrus, Cosmology, Theology and Interpretation, written by G. Bitag in 2004, published by Cambridge University Press, Cambridge. Early Greek Philosophy, written by J. Burnett, 1930, published by Adam and Charles Black, London. Hope that you have enjoyed the session. We can meet again with uh, another topic soon. Thank you.